Welcome back to another episode of PTV. I'm Luke Hoover. And I'm Jalen Miller. Thanks for joining us on the 100th episode of PTV. 100 episodes. That is something to be thankful for during this holiday season. PTV has changed quite a bit from its original airing in August of 2013. As many of you know, most of our PTV episodes can be found on our Panther Television YouTube channel. However, the very first six episodes of the season one are not on YouTube. That's right. The first six episodes are so special that they're kept locked away in our secret vault. Yeah, they're special, all right, and a little cringy, as we had a lot to learn when we first started the idea of having a student show. Throughout today's show, we'll throw back to some past PTV memories. We'll start by showing you this opener to our very first show. Take a look. Welcome to the first episode of Panther Television. I'm Seth Boswell. I'm Hunter Taylor. We'll be airing every two weeks to bring you up to news on everything happening in Panther territory. Here's a PTV fun fact. Seth Boswell and Hunter Taylor were the very first anchors of PTV and they anchored the entire season. Who knows, Luke, maybe in another 10 years or so, students will look back at this episode and have no idea who we are either. How could anyone forget us, Jalen? Well, people will likely forget PTV anchors. But we should never forget those who served our country. And that's why our music department, along with the K organization, hosted a special event to honor our veterans. Austin Durkin gives us a closer look. On November 11th, the Band and Amendment groups had the opportunity to honor veterans at this year's Veterans Day concert. I thought it was great. Um, we were well prepared, you know, it's been a busy school year, but we really wanted this to happen. Um, Veterans Day program has been part of the amendment tradition since I've been here at least, and so it was great to get going on it. I thought today's performance went very, very well. The kids seemed excited and they performed very well. Veterans Day isn't just about singing and playing music, it's also about serving others. Well, I hope they realize that there is a lot of joy and service, for one thing. Um, with the KAY Club, just helping others is really important, but also it's very fulfilling. And then I also hope that they listen to the message of Pastor Herder and just really realized how impactful lives of veterans are. The veterans appreciate being recognized for their service. It was awesome. <laughs> Loved it. Every one of the veterans I talked to was, thought this was just great. Hope we do it again. For PTV, this is Austin Durking. PTV first started at PHS nine years ago. You know who else first started here nine years ago? Let's look at an old clip to find out. Hi, uh, my name is Kendall Fiscus. I'm teaching uh, World and American History here at Phillipsburg High School. This is my first teaching job. I graduated last December from Emporia State University. Wow. Nine years can really change a guy. Well, yes. You realize we were in third grade nine years ago, right? You've probably changed too. He wasn't the only new teacher that year. Here's a couple more. Well, my name's uh, Nathan Strasburg. Uh, I grew up in Hay Center, Nebraska, so I'm not originally from Kansas. Uh, my name is Robin Sides, and I have been teaching for... 13 years. My first teaching job was here in Phillipsburg where I taught Spanish and then I've been at Norton the remainder of those years. A lot has changed at PHS in the last nine years, but one thing that remains the same is the annual food drive to help restock community food pantry. PTV's Connor Breyer visited our local pantry to learn more about the service they provide. Take a look. This year's food drive was a great success, but have you ever wondered where the food goes? We are located in Phillipsburg, Kansas. Um, we currently serve about 268 people. We've added on, I would say, about 20 new families this last year. So we serve all the towns within Phillips County. The food pantry benefits the community in more ways than just supplying food. A lot of the benefits, we're helping people that aren't able to establish the means of getting food within their family. Um, a lot of people were set off from COVID. A lot of layoffs going on. Um, there's a lot of people that don't have transportation to get to jobs or interviews. So we like to try and help them out. A lot of people have gone on medical leave. Um, lots of new families having babies that need help. Anybody, like we said, is welcome. They've got to live in Phillips County. That's our only stipulation. There's no income guidelines or anything. Um, we want anyone that is able you know, to come in here and needs assistance to know that they're welcome. 
more than what people know, a lot of their family members come in here that need assistance that don't like to reach out to family for help. And we just, we got a lot of people needing help right now in the community. For PTV, this is Connor Breyer. Ready, set, go. That is disgusting. <laughs> drive is just one of the many service projects our school holds this time of year that serves people in our community. In the spirit of helping people, the FCCLA teamed up with Student Council for a new service project this year. Jeremy Ford explains. <laughs> Jumping into the fall season, FCCLA and Stucco have found a new way to help serve in their community. Um, today we are being involved in a rake and run around our community. Um, it's something that we used to do in our old community where our family used to live before and we thought it would be a fun thing to try in Phillipsburg. I think we've partnered one other time maybe with another group to do it and so we were really excited this year that Student Council was willing to partner with us to come out and do this. We are raking and running as some would say and we are going to rake certain people's yards that need it who probably can't do it to help our community. The city agreed to come around and pick up all the leaves as long as we left them at the end of the driveway and I called them tomorrow and gave them addresses as to where the bags are. The Rake and Run project checks several boxes for the participating members. 
Well, this is part of our civic engagement for our school and for our school district. And so it really does meet another one of our KISA requirements that we've been working on. So that's always a great thing. Um, also, a big part of FCCLA is helping to serve our community and support those who support us through projects that we have throughout the year. So that's one of the reasons why we wanted to do it as well. Uh, it's always good to help your community because uh, well, it can either get your name out there or get your club out there, in our case now, and uh, see that we're beautifying our community and helping out. And we wanted to focus on the elderly that maybe couldn't do this on their own or it would be a struggle. And to do this, we relied on our own knowledge of the community and went to people that we knew would have struggles with this. And then uh, the people that have found us doing this have been really grateful and we're hoping that other people that haven't seen us doing this are happy when they do see that their leaves are gone. Although there were some hurdles to jump, students enjoyed the fall activity. Um, well, we've been waiting for the leaves to fall for a while now and our president, Jaden Minkler, started watching a website that was telling us when leaves should fall in Phillipsburg in October and it told us that they should all have fallen by October 26th. However, it is mid-November and there are still some trees that still have leaves so we're doing what we can for today and there might be more leaves later on. My favorite part of today was probably filling the big bag of leaves at the first two houses and then dumping at the third house because it was huge. My favorite part has been seeing the people that do see us come out and they're really happy and grateful that we're picking up all their leaves. For PTV, this is Jeremy Ford. Okay kids, go ahead and get your assignments out that we're here today. I'll come around and pick them up. Thank you. Make sure your name's on them. Thank you. Connor, go ahead and get yours out. Nope. Didn't have it. Didn't get it done. I was too distracted by your beauty. Wow. Connor, go ahead and get yours out. I would. Did you not get it finished? No. We worked a little bit on it in class. Did you take it home? Uh, my birds ate it. Your birds ate it? Yeah. Do you have parakeets or parrots? Cockatiels. Cockatiels, yeah, okay. <laughs> All right. Um, did you, did you remember what problem you got to? Two. Maybe you could just pick up there. Mm -hmm. Have it done by tomorrow. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Take a late read. While the food drive and the break and run help people locally, some organizations are also looking to help those in need in other countries as well. Carson Meidel shows us more on that. Boys and girls of all ages will have a happier Christmas this year because of groups in our community who have donated their time and money to pack Operation Christmas Child shoe boxes. What we are doing here is we are packing boxes for Operation Christmas Child, um, which will be sent out to children across the world on Christmas. The, the purpose of this project is basically to help uh, those who, um, mostly a lot of them in developing countries, but just people um, who are just kids who have not gotten the chance really to experience uh, Christmas, have never got a gift before probably. Um, so it's just a way of showing them that they matter uh, and that we are um, back here in the States, we're thinking about them. The PHSK organization and several churches in the area not only want to give children joy, but they also want to share a message about Jesus. The kids that are getting these boxes, they don't really get very many, if any, Christmas presents. And they just, the joy on their faces when they get them is amazing. The main point behind this project is to share the gospel of Jesus Christ and to tell kids about about who he is and uh, the gift of salvation that he he gives. Uh, the gift is just kind of a way to open that door. Um, the kids are just so thankful to get what they get uh, and so that opens up the door for them to hear about Jesus and to feel the love uh, of him and in some cases we've seen videos of where it's just completely changed their lives uh, as they've received that gift and uh, opened it up and and opened their hearts up to who Jesus is and helping to know him. For PTV, this is Carson Meidel.
Hi, my name is Deb Weisar. I'm 26 years old and I'm addicted to making kids feel uncomfortable. It started when I accidentally sat on a student a year ago. Now I just try to make a student uncomfortable every day. Some days it's bad and other days it's not so bad. I only do it when I'm helping another kid. But if I can make both kids cringe, then I've really reached my goal. My favorite thing to do is to get them to actually move their chair away. That really makes my day. I don't want to stop, but I think it's time for me to get some help. It's not professional. I know that. Although turkey will be on the menu for many people this weekend, last week in Kerwin something entirely different was served up for a feast. Aaron Johnson tells us more about a fundraiser held to raise money for a project in Kerwin. To help raise money to improve the Kerwin Community Building, members of the county hosted their annual Rocky Mountain Oyster and Fish Fry. We started the fundraiser in 2015 because of the um, the building was deteriorating. It was built in 1955, so it hadn't had any major work done since it was built, so we decided to start working and refurbishing the building. The fish fry is more than just a meal and a good time. There's also a raffle with various prizes for all ages to enjoy. We started the fish fry and we had a resident of Kerwin at that time that added the prizes. Um, and so the prize part of it's just grown and grown and grown exponentially over the years. And we've been doing this since 2015, like I said, so this is the sixth year. And it goes to Sandra! While adults enjoy the opportunity to socialize over a home-cooked meal, kids stay involved with the fundraiser too. The kids really enjoy the uh, prize part of it and, and a lot of times they get a lot of things free. For PTV, this is Aaron Johnson. Oyster fries on the menu is a lot better than murder. What? Murder? On a menu? Yep. That was the title of this year's school play. Here's a recap of that. Last weekend, PHS students showcased their talents on stage. Well, basically a play about somebody getting murdered. It was originally supposed to be a dinner theater, but uh, we obviously can't eat here. Tonight we had our annual fall school play. It was murder on the menu and we had a limited cast uh, compared to what we have had in the past. But uh, with our numbers we still had great energy and great focus. We all had our lines down and it was overall a great performance on the stage tonight. Getting the play put together is not as easy as it seems. Pretty hard because we had to find people to work in the back and then we had to get mics and all that set up. Actually really hard because you have to find props, then you have to find actors willing to act and make a fool of themselves. And then you have to find stage crew which is the hardest thing to find. Students always have a favorite part to the play experience. My favorite part absolutely is opening the curtain that first night. Um, I've been in the play for four years and for four years I've had to memorize lines and work and work and work and finally getting to that big revealing moment of showing everyone this amazing show that you've put on with these these jokes and these serious moments and this developing plot and organization it really pulls it all together. Well I think just getting to know everybody and then just being weird and random in practice and then coming together on our special night. For PTV this is Joel Ford. I'm PHS theater department members weren't the only ones displaying their talents recently. 
Earlier this month, area schools came to Phillipsburg for this year's MCL Vocal Clinic. Here's more on that. Earlier this month, PHS hosted the MCL Vocal Clinic, where six North MCL schools attend to learn new technique and showcase their talents. This experience gave students the opportunity to sing in a bigger group and perform with new people. The biggest thing for me is for choir kids, all choir kids here, to get a chance to sing in a big group because there's just something different about not being one of 20 and instead being one of like 100. In class, we just have the however many people that we're singing with, which is a small group, so it's good to be able to sing with a bigger group this time. Director Randy Burles from Colby Community College was this year's clinician. I hope that the kids got out of this that you don't have to be a professional musician to enjoy music and do music. Music's for anyone that wants to do it. It just takes some time and it takes passion and energy in order to perform. So I hope that's the biggest thing that they got out of uh, this clinic today that we did. I learned a lot about myself and uh, my confidence in singing. Um, I also learned that people can learn songs very quickly, um, especially with such an energetic and motivated uh, director that uh, Randy Burrells was. Um, he was great. I loved him out at Colby Community College. Um, I also learned that it helps to not be nervous and just enjoy yourself and things like these. And not, not just for singing, for everything, whether you're putting on a small show, a big show, or uh, you're just, you know, just something that you're not comfortable with. Uh, enjoying yourself is a great way to kind of rack those nerves so for PTV this is Jalen Miller it looks like we have a lot of talented students at PHS as you can see many students are involved in all sorts of activities and at the same time they are also managing their schoolwork and sometimes jobs as well both the chamber and the rotary like to recognize students for their hard work by honoring students of the month Sophie M explains Students often hear the morning announcements that congratulate the students of the month, but many don't realize why these students are being chosen and who is recognizing them. One organization that honors a junior each month is the Phillipsburg Chamber in Main Street. The Chamber helps businesses, promotes businesses that join Phillipsburg Chamber in Main Street, and we promote them as a business or as an individual when they have something going on and we want to honor a junior. Somebody that just has that initiative to want to be in our community, that does things for our community, and is just needs that little pick-me-up to say, hey, you're doing a great job. Although the Chamber honors a hard-working junior at PHS, the Rotary Club, which is an organization of business and professional leaders of the community, honors a senior who excels in academics. We want to encourage the high school and middle, middle school kids to um, become involved in their community. They're positive kids, that they're um, involved, they have good grades, um, they're in activities. For PTV, this is Sophie M. On this episode of The Real Girlfriends of PHS, Who invited them? Be prepared to get clawed. Rawr. Can you guys please be quiet? I'm trying to study my vocab. Thank you. Hi, I'm Ashlyn Cole, and my boyfriend is Chris Van Kooten. My name is Samantha Pruitt, and my boyfriend's name is Nate Tedford. I'm Kylie Russell, and my boyfriend is Jack Pockabeer. My name is Maya McDonald, and my boyfriend is Blaine Russell. Hi, I'm Kylie Seville, and Kurt Coombs is my boyfriend. One time I took the bar low is for limbo. I might be quiet, but I sure have a lot to say. I don't party like a rock star, I am a rock star. There's a reason hustle and muscle rhyme with wrestle. Whoever said nice girls finish last never met me.
I've decided to move the pow out of my house. What a perfect place to celebrate a panther victory. Pow out at Kylie's? Will there be snacks? Oh my gosh, I think they're here. Oh my gosh, girls, I'm so glad you made it. Hey, Ashlyn, I got these for you. I've like kind of noticed that Ashlyn looks like a little bit thicker tonight. Oh, thank you so much. I don't think Ashlyn will fit in her picture outfit she keeps that up. Ashlyn might just be finally growing. That's all. Hey, Kylie. Hey, Kylie. Those other girls are killing it with their outfits. And when I say killing it, I mean rest in peace. Come on in, Maya. Come into the party. What's up, Sam? I haven't hey, seen you Kylie. since like third period. Come in. Oh my god, Ashlyn, they have too much space. You over. I'm already over as far as I can go. No, you're not. I guess I can try to scoot over a little bit. Thanks. Gosh. Oh my gosh, girls. How about that awesome game tonight? Oh, I agree, Kylie. My boyfriend, Chris, he played so well. I saw him. He got through that line, and he sacked the quarterback like a beast. Oh no, he didn't. Yes, he did. Oh my. And he also played well last night, too. Oh, I, oh yes. Outside, strong side. Outside, strong side, yes. Oh my god. But did you see Blaine kill that guy on kickoff? Oh yes, I totally saw that, Maya. That was amazing. Yeah. Too bad our boys couldn't be here tonight, though. They have the ACT tomorrow. Yes. Our boys aren't just strong, they're also smart. Oh, True I agree, that, Kylie. Kylie. Yes. <laughs> Who is that? Oh, I saw this. It's the other team's girls. Oh my gosh. Who invited them? Sorry. I may have accidentally invited them on my Snapchat, but it's fine. They're nice. They look very lonely on the Snapchat, perhaps. This is not going to be okay. Who do they think they are coming to our powwow? Let's see. How many times did we sing the school song last time we played them? Uh, yeah, that's what I thought. Oh, hey. hey. Come in. Mwah. Mwah. Come on in. Yeah. Sure, take a seat on the ground, please. Those other team girls, well, they look like dudes. OMG, you guys are doing so good on your football season. Oh no, she didn't. Thank you, I mean, your quarterback is just so good. Quarterback, what is she talking about? I think there's two sides of that story. <laughs> Sam thinks she's so funny. I think she needs a little bit more wax. Well, maybe we should talk about her Lyman. Ew, they're so strong. Lyman? <laughs> Guys, can we just all get along? Give it back! <laughs> can we all just get along? <laughs> Thank you. Just wait till basketball season. <laughs> if you mess with our Panther boys, be prepared to get clawed. Rawr. Now it's time for our PTV sports update with Jeremy and Joel Ford. Hey Panther fans, welcome to our PTV sports update. I'm Joel Ford. And I'm Jeremy Ford. Winter sports practices have started, and we're excited to bring you updates on our PHS teams. Let's start by taking a look at how this year's wrestling teams are shaping up. Coach Kenny and his wrestlers are ready to hit the mats and get their season started. 
We're starting off really good. Uh, first two days of practices, uh, the boys and girls are wrestling real hard. Um, they're getting after it, they're paying attention, they're soaking things up like sponges and very impressed with them right now. It's going really good. We're all improving every practice and working hard, trying to become the best wrestlers we can. Coach Kenny is pleased with the effort his wrestlers have shown so far. We have, we have three state qualifiers back. We got a state placer in Brock Bursch, who's a senior. Uh, Theo Kazee um, is back for his senior campaign. He's a state qualifier. Bella Kazee was the girl's first ever state qualifier. She's back. So we have those three coming back to help do some leadership roles in the room. Um, right now, a lot of my freshmen are stepping up. I, everybody on the team is, is really impressing me with how they're working hard. The wrestlers are looking forward to what this season has to bring. Things I'm looking forward to is definitely Colby duels. That's always a fun time where you can get a lot of matches. And then, of course, the Panther Classic at home and regionals and state. For PTV, this is Luke Hoover. Our girls basketball team is putting we over me as they look to return to the state tournament for the third year in a row. Jackson Papp gives us his inside look. The Lady Panthers are excited to tip off their new season. Our season's going pretty good so far. We had our two mile on Monday and we um, completed our team goal. And then Tuesday and Wednesday we had two day practices and we'll see if we have one tomorrow. This season I'm just looking forward to watching the girls improve every day in practice, watching the strides that we make each and every game out and just kind of seeing how this, uh, this new group comes together and the chemistry that they build and how they, how they work, to work together. As the season begins, players set both personal goals and team goals as well. My individual goals are to come into practice every day and work hard to get better for the team. Um, our team goals this year are to win MCL and make it to state. I am excited to play TMP in Smith Center because they have a bunch of players back and it's always a good game between them. Both Coach Miller and her players know they have to be prepared for tough MCL competition. The MCL will be difficult again. You know, it's just one of the toughest leagues in the state, and um, it's it's going to be um, it's going to be TMP and Smith Center at the top, and uh, we know that they're going to be our biggest competition in terms of reaching the the goals we we want to achieve as far as MCL regular season and tournament goes. So uh, definitely just a, another tough year in the MCL. Got to have it ready to go each and every night. Most of all, the players are just ready to step out on the court and get the season started. I'm looking forward to coming to practices and working hard in the first game, of course. For PTV, this is Jackson Pop. Our boys basketball team returns a lot of young players who gained quality court time last year. The expectations are set high this year, as Andrew LaRue explains. The Panther basketball team starts the season with strong hopes of a successful year. Well, this year's team, uh, we got to replace some uh, guard play f from last year. Uh, once we do that, hopefully you're going to do a good job of replacing them and be able to compete for the Famous Morris Tournament Championship here right away. And then we get later in the season and, and compete for an MCL championship. Both coach sides and his players at high goals as they enter the season. For team goals, personally, I uh, you know, I want us to win. That's, that's always something I want. It's a goal every year to win MCL, go to state, win sub-state, all that. But uh, as a team, I want to end on a positive record with a positive game-winning streak. And then I also just want to have more made shots than this. To attain those goals, the Panthers will have to face some tough competition. Well, I think TMP, uh, they'll be the best team returning on paper. Uh, they got a lot of quality athletes. Their football team was really good this year. And, uh, they have a big kid inside that really improved a lot last year for them, so they'll be tough. Uh, some other teams will be uh, good this year, but I think there's some teams that uh, lost some good players from last year. So it should be, uh, I, th I feel like we're in the top four or five uh, of the league, and if we, we improve and get better every day, uh, we can be up there with the TMP. Overall, the Panthers are looking forward to getting started. I think this season I'm really looking forward to uh, playing with my team, especially with my brother. You know, we've played basketball since we were little. We've been playing, you know, organized basketball and just in our backyard and our side yard and our driveway. So uh, we've really gotten a lot of work and chemistry together through the years. And I'm super excited to play our senior year together. For PTV, this is Andrew LaRue. Many of you have probably heard about the possibility of adding boys tennis this spring at PHS. 
Since we've been taking a look back on old PTV fun features during this episode, we thought those of you who are considering tennis might need some inspiration. So here it is. If you want more PTV sports information and updates, be sure to go to myphillipscountyonline.com sports page. There, you will also find a new PTV sports blog that Joel and I are contributing to. That's all the time we have for our sports update today. I'm Joel Ford. And I'm Jeremy Ford. Go, go Panthers! Panthers. Before we end our show, we have one more segment for you. This one is for all the turkeys out there. Alfonso the third, and you killed my father, Alfonso the first. Now get over here! Wait, no! Stop! Man, that was a close one. Yeah, that's for sure.
That wraps up our 100th episode of PTV. I'm Luke Hoover. And I'm Jalen Miller. Have a safe and happy Thanksgiving, and as always, stay, stay classy, Phillipsburg High. High. Stay classy, Phillipsburg 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 High. You stay classy, Phillipsburg High. In our area, ranching and farming are more than just jobs. They represent family traditions and a way of life. They are an essential part of our community. At First National Bank and Trust, community is what matters most. From agriculture to education, we support those who make our community one to be proud of and a place to call home. First National Bank and Trust, where community matters most. Firebolt Ag, located in Phillipsburg and in Norton, is a full-service fertilizer and chemical company that is here to help you increase your yields and profits. Count on Firebolt Ag to provide you professional and friendly service. We also provide cash marketing with our ag consultant and have options for crop insurance as well. Firebolt Ag, farmers helping farmers succeed. At Rogers & Associates Insurance, we serve the Midwest. We offer home, auto, commercial, and farm insurance policies and provide solid options for life and health insurance. For those unexpected life events like hail, wind, deer crashes, fender benders, and the little things in between, we can help you ensure what matters most in your life. Let us help you design a plan that meets your needs and budget. Visit us online or call us at 1-800-569-0118 to learn more. The American dream has changed over the years, but Farmers National Bank has not. This is Jean Ann Wagner. Farmers National Bank has been backing the American dream for over 100 years. Tell us what you'd like to accomplish, and we'll work with you to achieve it. As we celebrate 100 years, it's never been about us. It's always been about our customers and their successes. That's the American dream. We're Farmers National Bank in Phillipsburg, Agra, Logan, Kensington, Stockton, and Atwood, member FDIC. It's the Alec Bovid Furniture Rodeo, starring Cowboys Brian and Kurt, the Chance Brothers. Hold him now. Look out, folks. Brian's in the Alec Bovid Furniture Lazy Boy, shooting a hanging on. Here comes Kurt on old spinner. What a ride. It looks like Brian's going to, uh oh, that'll leave a mark. Let's try that again, boys. Oh, heck, that bull is definitely seeing red. After a long day of rodeo, and at least they can not agree on football. Well, Olive Bovie Furniture in Phillipsburg. Jim and Terry appreciate your business.